how to talk like a prisoner. May not seem important out here in the free world, but I can promise you one thing. If you're locked up in jail or prison, you better learn real quick how to talk like the rest of those guys who are in there as well. Because it just may be key to you surviving and coming out of a place like that in one piece. Things are different on the inside. It's just the way it is. Prison is the underbelly of society. Guys make up their own rules in there. And they also make up their own slang. Certain words that they use that can have a completely different meaning than what you may think they mean. And I'm sure there's some words that you may be familiar with now. Like a prison kite. Just a simple letter exchanged between inmates stating whatever. From gang instructions and plans to other things like when a beatdown is going to occur. But there are a list of other words that I'm sure you are not familiar with as from prison to prison all over the country, probably all over the world, actually, I'm pretty sure all over the world as well. Guys who are incarcerated, they make up their own words and these words can mean anything. Like a prison wallet or man purse or keister or suitcase. All of these words mean virtually the same thing and have to deal with your ass. So if another prisoner ever comes up and asks you for whatever reason, if they can borrow your suitcase, I don't have any luggage. And for whatever reason, you clumsily say, yeah, sure, not a problem. I don't know what you're talking about, but sure. Well, you have just volunteered your asshole up for service for the potential transport of anything from drugs to tobacco, even a cell phone. I can assure you that suitcasing a cell phone is not a pleasant experience. <laughs> but, I, but I've never done that personally, I have to be honest with you. I'm just saying, hypothetically, I can imagine. <laughs> That's gotta hurt. But there is also another word that also means your ass that I know you are not aware of. Juni cakes. Juni cakes. If a prisoner ever comes up to you and says, what are you gonna do with those Juni cakes? Maybe you're eating a honey bun. Maybe you automatically assume that it's the honey bun that he is referring to as the Juni cakes, but really he's referring to your ass. And you say, you know what? I don't really want the rest of this. You can have it. I can have your Juni cakes? Sure. I'll come back and get those later. I'll be coming for those Juni cakes. Okay. It's easy to see how words can be <laughs> Not your best friend while in prison. Actually, words can be sort of like your worst enemy because if you don't know what they mean, they could land you in a very awkward and also painful situation. But there are less sinister words. We can stop talking about your ass for a while and we can move on to what zoom zooms and wham whams are. This is a more commonly known prison slang word saying, I guess. And what Zoom Zooms and Wham Whams refers to is actually your commissary. Your ramen noodles, your chips, your candies, your coffee, anything that can be purchased from commissary is referred to on the inside as your Zoom Zooms and Wham Whams. But there are more important words that you need to know while incarcerated. And these are the words that prisoners use to warn other prisoners that guards are making their rounds. It could be as simple as a guy like me in the cell block doing tattoos and the CO comes through the gate, I need to be alerted that the CO is inside of the cell block so that I can throw everything and get the hell out of that area so that the CO does not become suspicious that tattooing is going on. But prisoner slang has evolved a little more. What used to be when the guard would come through the gate and a simple whoop whoop would entail that the CO was in there, the CO has also evolved as well and got very smart to this. And they knew that as soon as they heard that woo woo, they knew that prisoners were trying to warn other prisoners who were doing things that they shouldn't be doing while in prison. And that would put them on even higher alert. They're already on high alert anyways when they come in there, at least for the most part, most of them are. And when they hear that woo woo, they know something is going down and we need to find what it is. And it's then when these correctional officers tend to think of themselves more like Navy SEALs and get in full tactical mode, thinking that they are about to go unfoil a plot, possibly of the same caliber as El Chapo's escape from prison. So a simple whoop whoop definitely is not the way that prisoners alert other prisoners that a guard is making his rounds. And again, in every prison, I'm sure there are a million 
different terms that prisoners use to alert other prisoners that guards are making their rounds. But at prisons that I was at, I will give you a few. The first one was as soon as the guard would come through the gate, prisoners on high alert, watching for this in particular, would immediately yell out to the rest of the cell block, floor is wet, the floor is wet. This is exactly what they would yell out. Yell it out across the entire cell block, floor is wet. And you knew when you heard floor is wet or the floor is wet or anything about a wet floor, that meant guards were making their rounds and whatever you were doing, whether it was tattooing, gambling, making wine, fighting, or gay sex stuff, it had to stop, at least for the time that the guards were in there because you just heard something about a wet floor. The floor is soaking wet would refer to multiple COs coming into the dorm, possibly already on high alert that something is going on and they're ready to come bust it up. The floor is super wet. Oh, they're coming. It's time to get the fuck out of there. Whatever you're doing, you need to just evacuate. Hit the eject and get gone. Because nine times out of 10, if you are in there doing something wrong and you hear yelled out from across the cell block, the floor is super wet. You know they're coming for you. But just like the whoop whoop, COs, they got hip to that. So every few months or maybe even every month, we would have to develop a new prison-wide word or saying that symbolized COs are making their rounds. And another one that we used quite frequently was Waldo. Like where's Waldo? Waldo! When you heard Waldo, it was the same thing. COs are in the cell block making their rounds. They are the Waldos. And you better put that shit away, whatever it is. Whether it's that tattoo machine, that bag of wine, or your penis that's in some other prisoner's hand. What? And act like you're just prison. How you doing, guard? Just prisoning over here. We're just prisoning. You know, prisoning. See you later. Let me take this penis out again. <laughs> Oh my God, the stuff that you see while in prison, it's crazy. Somebody actually commented and said, what's gonna happen when you run out of stories to tell? I've seen so much, I could never run out of content. Just throwing that out there. Another saying that's really good to know about while you're in prison is the term checking in. Maybe you will have to check in. And checking in refers to you going to the CO saying, hey, I am in fear for my fucking life in here. You need to get me out of here. They're gonna kill me, rape me, stab me, beat me up. I need to check in. Inmate.com, another prison term. Inmate.com refers to the grapevine of prison gossip that at times trends in prison. Where did you hear that from, inmate.com? Inmate.com refers to also bullshit that you will hear in prison. And believe me, while you are in prison, you are going to hear a ton of bullshit. Did you hear, man? They're going back to 65%. We will only have to serve 65% of our time starting in July. Wait a minute. Are you telling me that I just got sentenced to seven years and in July, I'm only going to have to serve 65% of that time instead of the 85% that I have to serve now? Yes! Holy shit, where did you hear that? Inmate.com. Thanks, but no thanks. And by the way, that is a rumor that I heard from the time I was 18 till all the way up until I was released from prison that they were going to cut back on the amount of time prisoners had to serve in prison from the 85% to 65%. I never saw that happen. Crashing the car, another prison term. And this refers to any time that you may be dealing with a female on the outside, whether it's a pen pal, girlfriend, whatever, and you fuck it all up. Some kind of way you fuck it all up. Whether you're on the phone with her, oh, buddy, I hear him right now. Who is that over there? Can you send me some money? You could crash the car very easily that way. Or whether, for whatever reason, she finds out maybe you're dealing with multiple females. I've seen this happen many times. Guys think they are the Don Juans of prison pen pal situations. And they've got five, six, seven chicks writing to them, maybe even more. And they tell each one, hey, it's only you, baby. It's only you. And then the weekend rolls up and it's visitation time. And two of these chicks show up at the same time. And... Well, quite frankly, you have just fucking crashed the car. I saw a guy, a good friend of mine actually, God bless his soul, he's still alive too. But I saw a guy, he had been locked up for five years. He was lonely and he met this chick. Some kind of way he met this chick on the outside, whether one of his friends, family members introduced him. He was calling, he was talking to her for about a week. He was in love with her at that point, after a week. And she was supposed to come see him. That weekend was gonna be the first time that he was gonna meet her. And this was Valentine's Day weekend, and he decided he wanted to surprise her 
by tattooing her initials across his fingers with his initials. He gets this tattoo done and she never comes to see him nor ever does she talk to him again. And the reason is, is because he told her on that Friday before the visit, hey baby, you'll never believe what I just did. I got your initials and my initials across my knuckles forever. <laughs> he crashed the car. He also got that tattoo covered up like as soon as it healed. It was pretty crazy. With all of this prison lingo that we have discussed here, this how to talk like a prisoner and understand just what certain words mean prisoners use, there are also certain words and things that you cannot say. For example, if ever you're arguing with another prisoner and you guys are just saying, fuck you, fuck you, and I mean it's back and forth and it's belligerent, you can never do in prison what they consider inviting another man to your dick. Fuck you motherfucker, suck my dick. You may very well die for doing something like that. You can also never say to another prisoner, no matter how heated the moment is, you can never call that prisoner a chomo, a child molester. Chomo, prison slang for child molester. You could very well get killed for that too. And there's also certain things that you cannot do while in prison. For example, being nosy and looking at another prisoner's pictures. Dude, who is that? That's my sister. Dude, she's hot. She's six. You can see what's bound to happen in a situation like that. Hey look, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did so, please leave a like and a comment. Let me know exactly what you think. Also, I'd love to hear what kind of prison terms or slang words that you use that could mean something completely different from what they are. Like lit. What the hell does that mean? Because I still have no fucking idea. Until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted and make the most of every day. Peace. Give a few shout outs real quick from Snapchat, Chance BLF, BFL. You're awesome. Thanks for the support on Snapchat. And also from Instagram, Theo Devonshire. Shout out to you as well. Specially requested shout out. You got it. Give a few more shout outs real quick from Instagram. Henry Smile. He says, hey, where's my shout out? It's right there. Special shout out to you, Henry Smile. Also, Zombie Kid 542. Excitement is brewing. There's always excitement brewing here, Zombie Kid. Thank you for your support. Let's go to Twitter. Let's shout out Tom Orton from Twitter. Been liking and retweeting a lot of my tweets lately. Thank you very much. Razor doing the same thing on Twitter. Thanks for supporting APS. Let's shout out Joe. Love your name. Thanks for the message and the support on Twitter. You're awesome. Let's shout out some people from the comment section of my videos. I asked if people could tell me why I decided to wear this shirt in the video. Not this shirt, but the shirt in one of my last videos. And um, only a few people got this right. You had to pay attention to the video. I specifically said in the video why I wore that shirt. But I do want to shout out a few of the people who did get that right. Everybody said that I wore this shirt when I got out of prison. No, I didn't. But it was a good, it was, it really was a good guess. Josh, Josh, you were the first one to get that right. Thank you for picking up on why I wore that shirt. Lorenzo Ramirez also got that right. Special shout out to you as well, Lorenzo. You're awesome. Owen D. Stefano, Owen D. Stefano. You got it right as well. Special shout out to, special. Special with that list. Special shout out to you as well, Owen D. Stefano. Two more, who is gonna get it? Um, it's Fractual. It's gray, like your hair. It's Fractual. Are you trying to say my hair is gray? Is that what you're trying to say right now? Whew, how do you say this? Nekitaja, Nekitaja, Nekitaja. I think I got that right. Special shout out to you, you also got that right. Hey look, that's it, and until next time,